Alrighty, what is going on everybody? Of course, my name is Blitzwinger, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to, of course, another Sideshow Collectibles Review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Sideshow Exclusive Clone Trooper Ordinance Special List. Hope that you guys enjoy the review. Of course, if you do, please don't forget to check out the link below. Alrighty guys, so of course, let's take a look at the packaging itself for the Bomb Squad Clone Trooper, aka the Ordnance Specialist. Right off the bat, I have to say, I really, really love the box itself. In terms of high-end collectibles, which is exactly what this is, this is of course released by Saito Collectibles, therefore, in my mind, that's a high-end collectible, like a really, really top of the line collectible. Now I know some people will talk about that being a controversial statement, doesn't matter. Nonetheless, to me it is. Uh, the box is part of the appeal. The box has to look cool. The box has to have uh, that kind of oomph factor to it. And this one certainly does. It's almost like a case of less is more because it's so elegant and simple that it works. Uh, the box has like this black like uh, finish, like matte finish, I should say, that extra oomph factor added to it. Additionally to that, I love that choice of black because it kind of reminds me of the introductions of the Star Wars movies of, you know, where, like it's a long, uh, long, long time away in a galaxy far away or whatever it is. Uh, so it, it has that similar kind of black, almost space-like look, which is quite cool indeed. We have a really nice shot of the Orden Specialist in the front. Same goes with the back, or sorry, the side of the packaging first. Has him with his little pouch right there, which looks pretty Pretty sweet. The other side actually has a different pose right there as well. Seems like he holds some sort of device in his hand. We'll take a look at the accessories in a moment, of course. And then on the back of the packaging, you can see him with his blaster pointing towards something. He's like, there's a bomb over there! Or he's going like, it's a trap! Wait, that's the wrong character. <laughs> Nonetheless, of course, by uh, sliding the packaging open uh, right on the side here, you pull on this. There's two magnet tabs, which you can kind of make out, actually. There's a little bit of a circular pattern right there. There. So there's two magnets at the bottom and top, and they connect with the side of the packaging. You open it this way, and then fold it outwards. You get another uh, logo for Star Wars, along with, of course, the Bomb Squad Clone Trooper name. And then you have an insight into the actual character, which looks absolutely cool. Just really, really neat. Nice size to him. Of course, there's a 1 6 scale figure, which looks really neat. So, that being said, now that we've taken a look at the box, let's get the toy out, let's get the figure out, and take a look at the lovely goodies inside. Alrighty guys, so here is of course the ordinance specialist out of packaging. I know that I usually would love to be able to show you the entire figure. The problem is my background is not wide enough <laughs> to cover the entire figure. In fact, you can even see the little clip right there in the corner for the um, holding up of the background. So. I do apologize about that, but I hope that you guys understand. Plus, more importantly, we need to be zoomed in so you can see all the lovely details on this figure. So first and foremost, I am absolutely blown away by several factors of this figure. First of which, and the biggest, is the articulation, which we'll talk about in a bit uh, later in the review. But second of all, is just the amount of detail. And more importantly than that, the fact that every little piece here is an individual piece. So you've got individual armor for the biceps, individual armor for the the little uh, shoulder pads, individual armor for the gauntlets, individual armor for the chest piece, um, the leg pieces, uh, the uh, leg armor is completely individualized. Like you can see, all this is just separate pieces, which is really, really mind boggling. I really did not expect that. Before I got them out of packaging, I thought it would be like all one cast and it would be all one solid piece. But you will notice that there's a nice little like uh, cloth mash underneath uh, that goes onto the actual torso or the body of the character. And then on top of that, we have all the armor. So it really gives it a perception as it would look in a real Star Wars situation or a real armor situation where it's actual individual little pieces that he assembles onto himself in order to be ready for 
battle. Additionally to that, you will notice that the entire paint job is really, really poppy and really colorful. I really love that orange. He definitely has that kind of like danger, 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 which fits very well with his occupation. Uh, but more importantly than that, it just works incredibly well with all the weathering effects that they uh, went ahead and did. You can see it's not a clean white. You can see that this guy has put this armor through the paces. You can see a whole bunch of like little oil spilled and dirt all over his armor. So you could kind of make up like what kind of wars and what kind of situations has this guy gone through to have all this dirt and all this build up all over his armor. It's really, really neat in that regard. Some other lovely details is of course the absolutely masterfully crafted helmet. I really love the way that that thing looks. It looks exceptionally cool. A really nice little split off right here in the middle. It looks quite neat indeed. Then the back of the helmet uh, has some lovely details as well. And once again, the weathering effect is present on the actual helmet as well. Then right here on his left hand shoulder you will notice that he has a little insignia that uh, is for the ordnance specialists. It's like a, a nice little almost like bomb shaped uh, device which is pretty sweet. In fact, you could see it in a lot better detail right here down on the stand which is an exclusive stand. Typically speaking, if you don't get the Sideshow exclusive version, it is just a black stand that says Star Wars on it. So it's a little bit different to this. This one as you can see is white and has the insignia on it which is pretty sweet. I actually really really like it. It's quite colorful and has a lot of uh, bright energy to it, so that's quite lovely as well. Additionally to that, you can see, of course, I have him displayed with his special ordinance backpack, where you can see that logo present once again. The backpack is, in fact, removable, as you saw in the little pose montage that I did before uh, we talked about the figure here. You obviously saw that it is removable. It's actually quite the simple process. All you have to do is just unclip it right here on the sides, and there are two different clips on uh, both sides, so all you have to do is just come in here and have to be very very gentle with that. Okay, so let me just to be to be safe better be safe than sorry You know, I don't want to end up breaking it off because it's all at a really really minute scale You just uh, pull it apart and then you just take the little strap piece off right here and slide it right off. You don't even have to take both straps off because at that point it's really easy to slide off. Now the backpack itself is actually quite nice because again, it's also weathered. It's interesting that it's got a cloth piece up at the top that's really, really cool. The only thing is that it does look newer than the rest of the backpack. I kind of wish that maybe there could have been some weathering on the actual cloth part, but then again, you could kind of handle that quite easily with a little bit of a, I'm guessing like maybe a black paint wash or something and uh, put over that and that would look a lot more fitting with the rest of the pack. It has a nice little uh, closing mechanism. All you have to do is just pull on that. And then on the inside, we reveal the two ordnance, which are the two uh, chemical uh, bombs. Apparently, from what I heard, uh, by the way, these do slide out, which again is incredible detail. We'll get to the accessories in more um, detail in a moment, but apparently there was a little bit of a misprint issue on the logo. I'm not sure how true that is, uh, but honestly, I would have never noticed that. As much as I like Star Wars and I'm a fan of it, I am uh, i wouldn't be uh, that nitpicky about it. So, just pointing it out because uh, it was something that I came across during my uh, research process, uh, but just wanted to let you guys know uh, that apparently that has, had been an issue uh, on some people's figures. Uh, so, nonetheless, that being said, speaking of the uh, ordinance and uh, the accessory count for this figure, why don't we go ahead and uh, actually discuss exactly that and all the insane amount <laughs> of accessories that the ordinance specialist comes with. Alrighty guys, so let's kick things off with all the uh, items that are ordinance related. After all, this is the ordinance specialist, so I thought that that would be a fitting way to kick things off. So first of all, we have of course the backpack as I mentioned before. It's quite cool looking. It's predominantly made out of plastic. The inside, of course, has quite a bit of room to hold all the ordinance related uh, mechanisms and parts, which is pretty sweet. In fact, there's actually some room left over after putting all this stuff in there. Uh, it is predominantly plastic, but the straps are cloth and then have like a little faux leather like uh, pattern on them, which is pretty sweet. Of course, we have some plastic on the buckles and such, which is again, incredible that at such a little scale, they can manage to do that. And then of course, the top uh, covering of the backpack itself is also made of cloth. Now, speaking of the ordinances themselves, the actual bomb, they are really, really cool because not only do they have incredible cool uh, shape and almost like a very characterful personality, like it almost looks like an eye or something out of Portal or something like that, so that's absolutely awesome. And then again, you can see how nice paint wash all over them to make them seem like maybe they've been, you know, battered down around the backpack or maybe this is a diffused weapon or something, which obviously to diffuse one of these, you would use this little thing which is also uh, one of the accessories in the set.
set, which is a kind of like pliers or maybe a wire cutter, whatever you would want to call it. Uh, they actually do open up, which is pretty phenomenal. Like again, it's amazing that they do open up and actually function. Uh, quite cool indeed. There's one specific hand that I found to be the best one for this particular uh, tool. This is the one right here. It's kind of a gripping hand. It looks like it's perfectly sculpted for that for this specific uh, accessory. So you just place the accessory in that hand, and as you can see, he can hold it quite well. It's not going to go anywhere, and it's staying within his hands, which is absolutely tremendous. Now, uh, one other thing that I wanted to point out, I actually showed it, but I didn't specifically point out, is the fact that the bombs do uh, outfold like so, so it's kind of like a, a chemical bomb. You can uh, slide out those mechanisms, and of course the mechanisms on the second one as well, which is pretty sweet indeed. Again, just really, really cool application of detail at such a tiny little scale, uh, and again, just really, really cool to see that. Alrighty, so next up we move on to the hands, which I know some people are like, what? Hands? Yeah, a lot of high-end or even most high-end figures come with replaceable hands. Now, I've never bought a figure that had this many of them, so this is absolutely crazy because there are over a dozen hands in this set, and that is absolutely insane. So you get so much variety in terms of display factors and display features and that's just really 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 cool about this guy so let's run through the hands real quick they're actually quite simple to replace they're very very simple you just pull carefully on the tab you obviously want to be gentle about that don't just tug at it so that you're not breaking anything by mistake so just gently tug it off and then slide on in the other pair of uh, hands as you see fit. So let's run through the hands that are available in the set. So first and foremost we have the trigger hands which you will see what those are used for in just a moment. So we have a, a pair for each side. We've got a left and a right of course. If they're matched up like this that means that they are a pair. Then we've got these kind of more open calm hands that maybe you could uh, kind of maybe like palm a weapon or something like that. So those are a little bit more calmer or maybe uh, you're holding on to something. So there you go. Then we have the classic of course fists. So there's the uh, default hands that he comes with and then we have some unique hands we have three unique hands for the right hand and then we have four unique hands for the left hand so let's run through those for the left hand first and foremost we have the ordinance holding hand so that's the one that is used to specifically hold the bombs in such a way so that they're not falling or such so that's really really cool uh, definitely quite a cool little hand it's almost like the force hand but this is a clone trooper so that wouldn't apply then we have the thumbs up which obviously uh, a lot of these hands are kind of almost like a communication language that an ordinance specialist would use you know without screaming or something he would use uh, some sort of sign language to signify how many bombs there are what a, what is the placement of the bombs where they are uh, so on and so forth so you've got the thumbs up there which is quite cool then you have this kind of a uh, motion you know maybe a uh, motioning towards where the bombs may be or something like that the two fingers then we've got the uh, what I like to call the selfie uh, but I mean, we know that that's not the selfie, it's obviously two, but <laughs> uh, if he wants to take some pictures on the weekend for selfies, he can certainly do that. Uh, then we have the plier holding hand, which I mentioned before, so there you go. Then we've got this uh, open, uh, maybe even sal uh, salute hand, you know, maybe he wants to salute uh, the commanders or something like that. Or, of course, it could also be a stop hand, or maybe guiding towards uh, this pathway or something like that hand. So again, very, very varied, and you will notice that all of them have... Uh, like little uh, patterns and such on them, which is pretty sweet. And you will notice also that uh, the right hands have the, these little like thunderbolt scratches, which is pretty cool, whereas the left hands have a different shape to them, uh, to the actual gauntlets that are protecting the hands. And last but certainly not least, the pick your nose hand, aka the one finger in the air hand. So that is absolutely phenomenal uh, for uh, just a varied amount of display. So not only does this guy come with a different amount of hands, he also comes with different feet. A lot of times figures at this scale don't have toe articulation so the way that they went around that is by offering you completely two different pairs of feet which allow you to basically still have a dynamic pose of maybe you know where your figure is running if you want to have a running pose or something like that you have these varied other feet which once again have absolutely gorgeous weathering on them to show that obviously your feet are more likely to be dirtied up more so than let's say the uh, armor on your chest because guess what you're splashing in the mud and so on and so forth so again just really really smart attention to detail very smart paint job on this figure to create a character and a personality around the figure itself which I think is how you get the most successful figures uh, out of your releases once again it's really really simple to replace the exact same process as for the hands 
Alrighty, so next up we move on to probably the two coolest accessories in the set, or I think that's what most people will think. I honestly like the backpack and the ordnance stuff most because it's, again, it's fitting with that character. But if you don't want to display him with his ordnance stuff, you still have the option to display him with some really neat Star Wars blasters. So first and foremost, we have this shorter blaster, almost like a submachine gun type weapon, which is quite cool looking. Again, some really lovely weathering work on this one as well. I was really, really, really impressed by the way that this one is done a lot of really neat little mechanisms to make it look like an older gun but also a gun that would fit in the world of Star Wars so that's really quite cool you have these little chain details right here that would almost act like an iron sight to a certain extent along with this piece right here then you have this extending arm which I guess you could use two ways one to kind of prop towards your shoulder so that as you're firing off uh, there would be extra protection there or the other if he is laying down and he wants to fire off that way you can do that as well so that that you have more of a almost like a tri-stand arm uh, to fire off of so that's pretty cool as well then we move on to, to the huge mantra monstrosity sorry about that but this thing is absolutely massive it is a very 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 huge huge blaster kind of almost like a sniper rifle inspired weapon it looks absolutely incredibly cool just super duper detailed you can see that there's a ton of paint work sculpt work go uh, that has gone into this thing just a a lot of varied uh, elements to it really really neat looking it actually has a slide off mechanism right here so you could almost imagine how this gun comes together piece by piece instead of just being this ginormous blaster it's uh, almost like you know you could imagine each and every single part of he has to carry in his backpack and then once he gets to the job site he would have to assemble it and put it together before he can uh, utilize the weapon so once again these are the two side arms or not side arms I guess blasters that come along with the ordnance specialist alrighty guys so next up for the last Last segment of the review let's go ahead and take a look at the articulation on this figure so the quoted number of uh, points of articulation is uh, somewhere give or take about 40 points now the thing is sometimes when you buy collectibles and even toys and stuff like that and like you know uh, even stuff that you would find in like a Toys R Us, sometimes they'll say, oh, 12 points of articulation, but then like four of them are actually useful. In this regard, I was absolutely blown away by how many points are actually applicable and just how many dynamic poses you can get this guy into. It's just absolutely awesome uh, in that regard. I love when a figure or a collectible, whatever it is, can be articulated to a high standard because then you could really mess around with it and get it into some nifty poses. So that being said, we got a really great, great, range of articulation right here on the head I mean like look at this it is phenomenal you could look up down way down and up you could even do the little like chicken bock forward forwards and backwards which is just awesome so just a, an incredible range of articulation on the head and the way that they can actually get around this is because of all the armor being separate pieces none of it gets in the way which is phenomenal uh, right here on the shoulder there's a tiny little bit of a limit because of the uh, shoulder pads right here because they are like a, a, a what is it called I guess it's um, like a pliable uh, plastic but I wouldn't recommend having it posed up too long just because again I, I don't feel too comfortable with the fact that if it stays up for too long it might st start to show a little bit of wear and tear again that's just my personal opinion uh, but once again you can see that there's that joint that allows you to bring the arm closer into the chest which is great because then it allows you to bring the arm across the chest so that's awesome there's a double jointed uh, elbow right here which again is not limited thanks to the fact that this armor can slide forwards and backwards depending on how much articulation you need. The wrists offer an incredible uh, amount of varied articulation even though they come out in and out. Uh, there's an actual joint at the chest uh, which uh, does maneuver up and down. If you want the armor to be sl uh, like sliding down like this, like how I have it sometimes because I like for it to connect, then obviously that articulation point is not going to be as useful, but you can work around again the armor by sliding it up and then you get all that articulation so you could kind of pose them and then slide it right back down over the way you want so that's great so you can even though some limitations are there you can work around them which is absolutely awesome so they give you the option to do so so I definitely like that quite a bit the legs have an incredible amount of range on them so that's great again especially for this scale uh, it's really really good you can move upwards downward double jointed knees which is phenomenal good ankle joints uh, up and down obviously no toe joint but as I mentioned before you have different feet to replace that uh, issue or that problem 
so that you can get some of those dynamic running poses uh, or some of the other features that you might want. Plus, of course, the other thing is that he has that awesome stand along with him to offer a little bit more support uh, for some of the more dynamic poses that you might come up with. So there you guys have it, of course, that is the review for the Sideshow exclusive Sideshow Collectibles Ordnance Specialist Clone Trooper. I certainly do hope that you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, of course, don't forget to smack that like button. Check out the link in the description box below for plenty of more information as well as some high resolution pictures for the figure on Sideshow's site. And of course, you could also see all the order details and such, which is pretty cool indeed. Additionally to that, uh, I just have to say, I'm really Really, really impressed by this thing. I would also love for you guys to recommend to me what is your favorite clone trooper in the comment section below because I'm gonna keep my eye out on hopefully maybe picking up some clone troopers in the future to maybe assemble like a cool little unit uh, of the coolest clone troopers uh, in the bunch. So that being said, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear some of the other clone troopers that you find to be cool. What did you think of the Orden Specialist right here for the Sideshow Collectibles lineup? And once again, don't forget that this is indeed the exclusive edition, which is is, uh, the main difference with it is the stand. So again, if you're considering, you could also get the regular edition or the exclusive just personally on your preference. Thanks all for watching, guys. Don't forget to, of course, smack that like button, as I said before. Have a fantastic, fantastic day. Thank you guys so very much for watching the review, and I'll see you folks later, alligators. Bye-bye, guys.